Well, g'day, floodies and globe defenders. It's Critical Think from Down Under. I've recently done a series of three videos pointing out what's wrong with Jay Tolan Media One's video, How I Measured the Radius of the Earth. Well, he's redone that video, added a bit more material, and corrected just one of uh, many mistakes. So this was uh, the spreadsheet that he showed that was wrong, and he calculated the radius, the Earth, wrong. So everything was okay while he calculated it wrong, but then um, when pointed out the mistake, kudos, he did uh, correct that particular mistake, but he left all the other mistakes in. So he's corrected his calculations and come up with an Earth radius 4394 miles, which is very close to the official radius of 3959, and especially when you factor in the measured refraction in those kinds of conditions, which was 1.11 as I illustrated in my previous video, and then the radius of the Earth comes out, he's measured it at 395 something, so within less than 1% and about 0.1%, very accurate. So here's a problem. Before, when he was saying it was 6,000 something miles, he didn't have to come up with an excuse for that. But now that he's accurately measured the radius of the Earth, he has to invent a new excuse. Because, oh, we can't have that proving the globe, can we? So let's hear some of what he says. Now, the accepted radius of the Earth is uh, 3,959. Uh, so we're fairly close here. Um, now, Very we close. haven't uh, assumed any refraction. This is just pure geometry here and um, angular measurements. So you hear what he said here? Pure geometry and angular measurements. So, um, but a good question to ask is, have we really measured the radius of the Earth? Uh, that's a pretty dumb question. Yes, you have really measured the radius of the Earth. You've done the correct measurements. You've come up with the answer which matches the accepted radius of the Earth. So really, there's no question. I mean, this area in the Mojave Desert is fairly flat. And by flat, you do mean that there is no elevation change over a large distance. Now, that definition of flat does not mean that the surface is not curved. But yes, 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 there is no elevation change or no discernible elevation change over a long distance. Um, and it certainly would look flat, but you've measured that it's not. So, what's the excuse going to be here? Have we measured the radius of curvature of this flat area? Yes. The answer is no. No, We've it's not. We've made some measurements, obviously, but we're relying on data extracted from Google Earth. Oh, is this the same Google Earth that uh, all the flat earthers use because they don't have a map of their own? Is this the same Google Earth that flat earthers use to work out distances and heights in their hopeful attempts at uh, proving the flat earth and uh, nearly always end up proving the globe? Is this the same Google Earth that works just fine for flatties until it doesn't and then it's all wrong? the target altitude and the uh, altitude of um, the aqueduct walkway, which is fairly level. All right, those numbers come from a spherical coordinate system. That well, it has nothing to do with the spherical coordinate system. They are measurements of elevation. Elevation is just like a stick in the ground, how high it is. It has nothing to do with spherical coordinates. You can always measure some, how high something is. The answer will be exactly the same on a flat Earth or a globe Earth. 
the elevations are well known and can be verified. And uh, it's been demonstrated time and time and time again that elevations on Google Earth are accurate to within about 30 metres in most cases and they're getting better and better. But um, it's no brainer just to measure, measure, you know, measure the altitude of something, the distance between the ground or the sea, the distance from the ground to the top of a mountain. Not so difficult. It's got nothing to do with global coordinates. Google Earth uses or ellipsoidal. Okay, so what we've done is we've really exposed the value that was used to encode those values to really understand. No, 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 no. <laughs> what a load of nonsense. We've not exposed, there's nothing being used to encode elevations, they're just measurements. They're just a distance, you know, like you measure with a ruler. Then this, have a look at this graphic. So there's flat areas on the Earth. And you notice he's using Google Maps, I mean Google Earth again. And, uh, this graphic depicts such an area. I've drawn that blue curve there, fairly uh, flat, okay? And uh, there's two... Um, that blue curve, that's not a curve, that's a straight line. I'm, think, I'm thinking he's talking about this one up here between H1 and H2. That's a chord. That's not a curve. Altitudes above mean sea level, H1 and H2. Now, if we take that uh, segment and we measure more altitudes across it and we plot that so he clearly said we measure more altitudes across it if you maintain a constant altitude along that path it will be of course the same altitude along but what he's done he's taken a curved surface and he's drawn a line between two points and pretending that that I don't know. It's easy to misunderstand. Who knows what he's at, but this is just downright silly. On a graph, as a function of angular distance, well, what do you know? That flat area plots as a curved line. If you were to draw a straight line between H1 and H2, you can only get a curved line if it's not flat. Now, if you were to measure the altitude along H1, H2, it would be a straight line on flat or on globe. But it's only on a globe Earth that you can get this curve like this if you draw a straight line between H1 and H2. Oh, it's so simple. And yet he's turned it around and, well, pretty much... For a guy of his intelligence, I'd say that that's a deliberate deception. Curving upwards. So we've really turned things upside down. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. so Just a minute. i got to put my own laughter. <laughs> no, yeah. Right. <clears throat> Well, it really depends on the coordinate system, right? No. He used the coordinate system and he gave us some uh, altitudes for... No, no, no. That's just straight geometry, right? When, by his own admission, he's just measured angles and used geometry. Nothing to do with coordinate system. If the Earth was flat, this line would be a flat line. If the Earth was flat, his angles that he measured would all be the same if he's sighting to that mountain that is a similar height. Well, pretty close to be the same. They wouldn't show the curve that it shows. Wouldn't be able to measure the radius of the Earth with a theodolite if that region of the Earth was flat our target and uh, the observational sites 
And all we've done is really measure the angle and expose that radius that was used to encode this data. Just remember, elevations are not global or flat numbers. They, you cannot use spherical data to encode elevations. That's all we've done. And I'm sure he knows that. And we really haven't measured the radius of curvature in of course Antelope you have. Valley. Not at all. You know, that area is very flat. When flat means there is no change in elevation along that region. That does not mean that it's not curved. So, as you can see here, he's just measured an angle. He's taken the angle from the perpendicular. On a flat earth, that angle would always be 90 degrees. But now, because it's a globe, that angle turns out to be greater than 90. He knows that. So let's look at this the two ways, right? If you have a curved surface and you put draw a straight line between H1 and H2, well, of course, the distance between the curve and the, and the straight line is going to change and give him that upside-down curve he showed. Um, this is one of the tests for a flat Earth or a globe Earth. If you draw a straight line between two points of equal height on a flat Earth will be a different result from a globe Earth. If you take a different interpretation on what he's saying and that these elevations are encoded with a spherical coordinate system, then we'd have a lot of trouble measuring anything. Because this guy at H1, he might be six foot tall, but the guy at H3, he's going to be a dwarf. And if H1 was over here, who would be the tallest person? Oh, I don't know. It's just so confusing and ridiculous. So he's added that little bit of nonsense to his video. And uh, he's failed to correct some of the other glaring errors. <coughs> this diagram he's retained. It's completely wrong, as I explained. And given all the reasons in my other video, one of my other videos... This is also deceptively wrong, completely wrong. He's retained that. And he's retained this temperature profile here, which is unsupported by the evidence of the recorded temperature history of that region. And don't forget, though, that uh, in a previous video, this and, and repeated in the latest one again, is... His criteria for flat Earth here was theta 1 equals theta 2 equals theta 3. And if it was a curved Earth, theta 1 would be greater than theta 2 and greater than theta 3. Now, in a previous video, he claimed that theta 1 and theta 2 and theta 3 were equal. But you'll notice that um, in, he, in this video, still, he's, he has proved the globe. With these numbers here, theta 1 is greater than theta 2 is greater than theta 3. He's proved the globe. So now he has to come up with a different excuse. And oh my goodness me, I've proved the globe. Now what, what absolute nonsense can I come up with to try and convince my flat earth viewers that I just haven't proved the globe? <laughs> <laughs> J. Toller Media One has added another measurement to his updated video and uh, I've done quite a bit of work to analyse this and you'll see that in my next video.